All right. So uh, in this scenario, this is going to be uh, working a little bit with our profiles and tags, uh, starting with our AP join profile. So even though we went through the basic setup wizard earlier, uh, and we created a few tags and we created a WLAN to assign them to the WT data PSK. Well, um, we didn't really customize the, um, the AP join profile that was created. We created one called HQ, uh, but we didn't really customize or do anything special for that uh, AP join profile. And this is something you definitely want to do, uh, you know, for all of your sites. Now, uh, the, the task that we have is Make sure we customize the AP join profile at site HQ, give the APs at HQ proper HA settings, allow local AP authentication with a valid user and explore other AP join profile options. So uh, with that, we're gonna jump over here to our controller. We are gonna go to our configuration tags of profiles and AP join. Now, there's a default AP, pro AP profile and this is there, of course, by default. Um, all the options, there is no uh, HA options, there is no nothing by default. And if you look under management um, and credentials for user, there is no default credentials. So what that means is uh, if I create stuff and I just use the default profile, then uh, let's say I ever needed to access an AP for some reason, maybe a uh, conversion to EWC or maybe just running some uh, you know troubleshooting commands, whatever, I, I can't, okay? So if I um, connect to uh, our AP3 here, I think I was just on it actually, with any default settings or uncustomized settings, then what you're really gonna get is, hey, there's not a valid user, so we can't let you authenticate, okay? And that's there, um, like we said, because for local mode APs, you really need to have a need to get into an AP. We don't want to just let somebody have a prompt um, for the heck of it, right? So uh, we've got the HQ uh, profile assigned to both APs at the moment. And uh, we're just going to give it a description. So we're going to say WTHQ uh, join and already got something st stored there in Chrome. Uh, we want to give it an NTP server, which in our case is the uh, switch. So 10.1.10.1. And then we've got options like, do we want to enable lag for those APs there? If I've got two uh, interfaces connected, things like that. All the new APs are MGIG connect capable, so that's the best way to get additional throughput on them if you need to, uh, but you could. Um, then you've got uh, for Office Extend APs, right? You've got some options there for local access, link encryption. Do we want to do rogue detection with a Office Extend AP? Office Extend are usually at somebody's house, okay? so. We don't really care too much about rogues at somebody's house typically, right? Um, unless we're just looking for our exact SSID or something like that. Now, um, as far as the cap app, this is the traditional HA settings. So what that is, is we've got a heartbeat every 30 seconds. We're gonna do um, send a heartbeat to our controller. And if that fails, then we're going to retry uh, sending heartbeats uh, every three seconds at five second intervals. So this used to be uh, three retries at one second intervals, or sorry, five retries at one second intervals, but that's changed since uh, Aerospace to iOS XE. Now, um, what, what we wanna do here is set up our backup primary controller with the controller name, so C9800 uh, and then 10.1.10.10, .10. and it is an SSO mode, so we don't, have a secondary controller to point this guy at right now. Uh, the two controllers we have are SSO, so the AP only needs to know about the one uh, host and IP address. So uh, the other options we have here for advanced is, do we want data encryption between this AP? Well, if we're doing, and we're talking about CAPWAP data encryption, you see there CAPWAP and data encryption. Uh, so what that is, is um, by default CAPWAP uh, the uh, control plane is encrypted by default. The data plane is not. So the data that's actually uh, transmitted is not encrypted. This would allow data encryption with that, okay? So that's something you might wanna do there. Now, as far as AP, uh, do we want to, uh, wh what are we gonna do with the, uh, do we have a power injector, okay, on our APs? Um, and then an injector Mac, it's it's up to you uh, if, we wanna, if we wanna do that, but, um, this is defining that we have power injectors and what they are. 
the EAP type for the AP to authenticate to the network, okay? So this is, again, if we are, uh, which we should be doing, having our APs authenticate via .1x before they ever start serving client data, right? So for uh, enterprise access devices, every enterprise access switch, all access interfaces should be configured with 802.1x authentication. So we should make sure every device that can authenticates to the network. And if for some reason they don't have an EAP supplicant, Cisco APs definitely do, then we can use MAB, right? Uh, we'll do a lab on that later. So uh, this is if we had uh, extended modules, hyperlocation, all that kind of stuff. But what the other thing we had to talk about was um, our, do we, are we going to allow access to this device? Now, if we wanted to Telnet or SSH, Telnet, as we know, should never be used because it's not secure. So we would want SSH if we were doing that, but uh, that's not the type of management. Really, the type of management is just the serial port we have in a console server, which is kind of unique for APs because a lot of people don't have console ports running their APs, right? Um, so we've got this option here, though, under management for users, credentials, CDP interface. So what we want to do is we want to create a user here, and we're going to call this uh, AP admin. And we're going to put in our password type and secret type. Now, we can adjust this to AES if we want. But again, uh, just keeping it simple for now, AP admin. So we'll save that. Uh, didn't mean to go ahead and click apply, but that's OK. Uh, so uh, we've now got our user. Uh, defined here. Then you've got our dot one X credentials. So earlier you were looking at the uh, the AP EAP authentication. So which type? Well, this is saying EAP type, EAP fast, and we're doing authorization just DTLS right now, right? But if we do uh, AP EAP, we're going to do uh, EAP uh, fast, and then we could change our authorization if we wanted to our dot one X port auth. Uh, cap up DTLS plus dot one X port auth or just dot one X port auth or just cap up DTLS. So you've got some options there as far as validating the AP is who it says it is both with the switch and the controller. Okay. Then uh, we've got our CDP. Do we want to have that enabled or disabled? And then uh, security, some rogue parameters there as well. And if we're going to do the adaptive whips with it and then any custom QoS mappings we need from the AP to the switch. Right, so typically, as long as we are uh, mapping our QoS uh, profile at the switch and just uh, trust DSCP, we're good to go. But there is a lot of flexibility with the 9800 architecture and QoS policies, as promised by Cisco. So uh, we're going to go ahead and click Update and Apply. That met our requirements. And now, whenever we go to our APs, remember, it will take a second. Okay, so it says, please configure a valid user, update NTP source to uh, we'll see. So those couple things were done. We should now have a login. So AP admin. And now we're on our AP. So hope this was enjoyable to you about our AP uh, join profiles. And you'll want to have one of those uh, for each of the different uh, settings you need with your sites okay so uh, we'll we'll take a look at that and you've got um, we're, we're gonna look more at these as we go along so we'll see you in there cheers